Every day we have uh, wonderful uh, speakers here. Uh, Charles Mangbuk, uh, Cardinal Charles Mangbuk came uh, to Budapest from Myanmar. He, he will soon uh, arrive. And there were a lot of photos in the world press about the, uh, the bloody conflicts in the streets of Myanmar. Perhaps you saw the, the photo um, made of uh, Sister Anne Rose, who kneeled down, knelt down and prayed uh, before the soldiers. You could hear Pope Francis, who uh, expressed his compassion to the victims of the violence. Uh, Myanmar has a um, majority of Buddhism. Uh, the only 1% of them are 1%, 4% are Muslims. But but in spite of the oppression, the uh, Christian uh, Church of Burma uh, could increase. Uh, the number of uh, priests uh, grew from 100,000 to 700,000. The priests, 160 priests uh, uh, grew into 700 priests, monks and nuns from 300 to 2,000. Uh, majority of them are uh, younger than 40 years old. Chan Bo said that the, um, the church was like a mustard seed which became a big tree. The, uh, the strength of the community is well shown that uh, 16 charity organizations help the needy uh, receive uh, with big love the first uh, cardinal of the history of, Mi history of Myanmar and the, the Archbishop of Rangoon, Charles Mangbo. Your eminences, dear bishops, fathers, brothers, sisters, Friends, good morning to all. You get <laughs> You get Ho Chi Vang Nak. That is the end of my Hungarian language. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I greet you all, the graceful people of Hungary and fellow pilgrims from various parts of the world. The great people of Hungary, our greatest host from Budapest, our brothers and sisters from all over the world. I am grateful to this organizing committee, the Church in Hungary, all the bishops, all the religious, the people of God. Of course, my presence here is due especially to my friend, His Eminence, Peter Karina Erdo, Archbishop of Budapest, Primate of Hungary, whose warmth and uh, insistence made me cut to come here despite all travel challenges. Thanks, Your Eminence. This is like a... <clears throat> this is like a Pentecostal movement. God's all springs flow like a mystical river here. We, as a people of all races, languages and cultures, could to come together as the body of Christ and celebrate oneness. May these graced moments bring health to the world, peace and prosperity to every soul. God, we extol, all my springs are in you. The Eucharistic Congress is really a Catholic universal gathering commemorating the first soaking of the Holy Spirit on the apostles. The strong wind of the Holy Spirit is flowing across this hall and stadium. The Spirit falling as tongues of fire. Our languages may be different, but you are united one in the message of the Lord Jesus. Let us celebrate this uh, moment of grace. I was uh, chosen as the papal legate for the previous Congress in Cebu, the Philippines. The Archbishop Alma is here also. Thousands of participants from uh, 71 different countries attended the weekend like this. It was an experience of the outpouring of the Spirit. 
The Philippines remains one of the very largest and Catholic active community. Millions attended daily masses, adoration, and theological reflections. Amidst all those celebrations, I had the joy of uh, meeting your wonderful uh, Cardinal Peter Eldo was there. I'm glad, so glad that His Eminence efforts resulted in this uh, visit. So it gladdens my heart to attend yet another event of grace. I'm glad that I'm invited to speak today on the birthday of Our Lady. May her intercession in these challenging times bring healing and peace to all of you. You are great Hungary, blessed among all nations on the globe. That <clears throat> the church in Hungary, a church formed through patience and forbearance. My great admiration goes to the Catholic Church in Hungary. The church in Hungary has a long journey history of giving witness to the gospel, of facing suppression and suffering. A nation of a people of different ethnic, linguistic, and liturgical traditions living together. I remember with a great joy the history of this gallant Catholic Church evangelized by saintly Stephen of Hungary, the first king of Hungary, 1001. His hard work saw the establishment of so many dioceses, conversion of this nation. I'm sure his virtuous spirit hovers over this conference. The church in your country has given so many saints and martyrs and missionaries, men and women, to the universal church. We thank God for them all. Through the ups and downs of the his history, you have kept faith, suffered, and struggled. But you have been a faithful witness to the gospel. The beautiful churches here and the monasteries are the monuments of great faith. Above all, this Eucharistic Congress is a powerful testimony to the faith which is very much alive and vibrant. May God continue to bless your land with peace, and may he fill us with his love as we gather in his name. I'm very glad to hear Hungary, which was once highly threatened by pandemic virus, has managed to control it, and we can come together as the universal family to celebrate the victory of patience. Yesterday, when I arrived at the airport, please, he said, you can take out your mask. So I did it for keeping that for almost 60 hours coming from Myanmar. May the Eucharistic Lord, who multiplied five loaves and distributed to 5,000 people, break this bread of healing in our gathering and to the world. Faith of a master seed can remove mountains. Let our prayers knock down the mountains of this pandemic. This is possible, and Hungary has approved that. Myanmar, a church A church tested through its patience. I come from a far away land, a small country in the vast continent, of course, bigger than Hungary, Myanmar, Asia. My country was formerly known as Burma in the Southeast Asia, 
with a population of 55 million. It is rich in the cultures with more than 135 ethnic groups living together, often called Rainbow Nation. The church is young, but vibrant and growing. Majority of the people in Myanmar are Buddhist, like in most Asian countries, except the Philippines. Christianity is a minority religion in Myanmar, too. However, we have a very vibrant and a young Christian community, which continues to grow in number. Myanmar is blessed with many vocations to priesthood and to religious life. Our people are graceful people, lovers of art and culture, and very religious. God was good to us. He has kept so many resources above the ground and below the ground. But our people face seven decades of great challenges. Last six months, our simple people face multi-layered challenges. COVID, coup, collapse of economy, and the climate changes. Catholics have suffered a lot. Our churches have been attacked. Many of our people are refugees in our own land in IGBs. Pope Francis has a special love for this land. In 2017, to the surprise of the world, he had chose our country, a country of just 700,000 Catholics for his papal pilgrimage of peace. He is the prophet of the margin. He came to see the people of, in the margin. After the recent political turmoil, Pope Francis has spoken seven times supporting our suffering people, celebrated a special mass for Myanmar from the Vatican. I'm too glad that he will be here for the closing ceremony. I'm glad to be here despite all the difficulties and transit challenges. I'm here to be part of a Hungary Church's effort to bring the Universal Church for this great Eucharistic conference. I also seek your prayers for our people. We need your prayers. We need you. Let me start my talk on uh, patience, the divine patience in the Eucharist. Let me illustrate uh, with the devotion made popular by Pope Francis. Mary of Knots, a good example of patience. Let me start with a story about the great painting of Our Lady of Andua of Knots. When Pope Francis was a student in Germany, he came across the devotion to a Mary of Nords and Dyer, the devotion to Mary and Dua or Antia of Nords, is about 300 years old, but became more widely known as Pope Francis spoke about and promoted it his papacy and also while he was the Archbishop in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In the painting, Mary undies the knots. One angel gives her the knotted ribbon, while the other holds the unknotted side and presents it to us. The theology is that knots brought by our first parents through their disobedience is slowly undied by the patient obedience of Our Lady, who said yes to the message of uh, Angel Gabriel. And what is the relevance of this story to our topic? Patience. Disobedience ended when our first parents could not exercise patience but listen to evil advice. 
Redemption, according to this story, comes through patience of Mary. But there is another in interesting side of this story. When a group of pilgrims uh, visited uh, the shrine in Germany, an impulsive tourist told the parish priest, Father, Mother Mary should have used the knife to cut the knots faster. He was not aware cutting the knots in haste would destroy the whole rope. The modern generation, we, the modern generation, seeks quick fix solution. Patience is undying the knots in our lives. We all have knots in our lives, many knotted by others, but many are not uh, by our own selves. The psychological knots, the spiritual knots, and the physical knots. Human beings are so good in knotting themselves into difficult situations. And those who are desperate, they knot the knots and stay trapped. And dying lives not not needs patience. <clears throat> Pope Francis said, through Mary, all the knots of our heart, every knot of our conscience can be undone. Nothing is impossible for God's mercy. Even the most tangled knots are loosened by his grace. I do pray that Mary, Mother, help the world to undie all the self-inflicted knots. Let's see for our lives, encouraged by the Pope. Let us start with the prayer that the same patience that animated the Mother Mary may also animate all of us gathered here to understand the mental, physical, and the spiritual knots that are impediments to us. We pray to the Lord Jesus, whose presence in the Eucharist as an embodiment of his creative patience, give us the grace of undoing all the difficult knots in our lives with patience and endurance like Mary, so that we may see all the blessings in our life, in our families, and our nations. Patience, a patient understanding. What is patience? I do hope we can patiently understand what is patience. I'm giving one hour talk to you on this topic. I'm sure you will show patience as we go through this uh, very important uh, grace, gift of the Holy Spirit, which is not only spiritually filling, but very useful in our lives. If anyone leaves before I finish the talk, this is a sign that uh, not so patient yet. Eh? But I'm just kidding. If you need to go out, please do go, especially when you have the stomach problem. And all. <laughs> Socrates would appreciate the patience as the master virtue. The man who is the master of patience is the master of everything. Patience is a waiting with hope some others would define patience is not the ability to wait, but to have a good attitude while waiting. Patience is defined as the state of remaining tranquil while awaiting an outcome. Patience, steadfastness, endurance. <clears throat> a state of being able to bear up under provocation, forbearance, Patience towards others, of human beings, ability to understand God's ways. St. Paul calls it the gift of the Holy Spirit, the door that opens to love, 
love is a kind. If we substitute the word love with patience in the great lyrical praise of love, the first Corinthians 13, we could understand the meaning of patience. Mother Teresa is known for our patience and humble service to the poor. She used to say, without patience, we will learn less in life. We will see less. We will feel less. Without patience, we will hear less. She was steep in patience as she did what she had to do day after day, year after year, decade after decade, despite the realization that change will come slow, if ever, to the plight of the poor and downtrodden around the world. So the lesson for Mother Teresa is that she said, our sure path to holiness and to heaven is patience and meekness under adversity, done for the motive of loving God and loving neighbor and forgiving enemies. The meek will inherit the kingdom. We need patience to understand God's action to us. Life is not a fast food restaurant. It is a patient pilgrimage Fast internet may connect the smartphones, only patience connects hearts. COVID, our irritating teacher of patience. Even those who never thought about patience, they have known it challenged by it during the pandemic. COVID has taught us this virtue in the most painful way. This topic of patience is painfully relevant today. COVID has closed our churches, making the celebration of the Eucharist a big challenge. Our human sensibilities are wounded by this virus. Our patience is a challenge. Lack of human contact. Our communion as human beings is curtailed through social distancing. We are afraid of each other. We cannot say proper farewell to our dear ones when they die. We cannot bring that even to the church for the last Eucharistic celebration. Rob of smiles. Our faces are hidden from our dear ones with a mask. The greatest gift the apostle laid of smiling is robbed of by the virus. We are hidden from our dear ones. So you don't know whether I'm smiling or getting angry. We are hidden. So livelihood of loss, a prospect of starvation in countries like Myanmar, anxiety. We are forced to doubt ourselves, washing our hands many, many times. One old lady in Myanmar was pronouncing, she did not know how to pronounce coronavirus. She said, Canada virus. <laughs> I hope it's not an offense to our gardener, Lacroix, for saying Canada virus, <laughs> coronavirus. Wounds. The mental wounds is staggering. So many people are pushed into living alone in existential anxiety. Most reviewed studies reported negative psychological effects, including post-traumatic stress 
symptoms, confusion, and anger. Stressor included long quarantine duration, infection fears, frustration, boredom, inadequate supplies, inadequate uh, information, financial loss, and stigma. Great challenges to spiritual life. Spiritual values are creative and constructive mechanisms working to stabilize the society to prevent its destruction. This is their regularity. Compassion, kindness, sympathy, caring are some of the spiritual values that are threatened by this virus. Being human is part of divine. That vocation remains largely challenged. Patience helps us to salvage our humanity in this pandemic. Despite our great challenges, we are winning on the, the spiritual sphere. This came through patience, which St. Paul calls it the gift of the Holy Spirit. COVID-19 pushes us hard to rekindle our faith, to see God's intervention in overpowering this disastrous effect of coronavirus. The COVID forces us to be patient. Patience taught the following spiritual benefits. Non-ordained ministries, a call to pray from home, transfers a greater responsibility to non-ordained members. Praying from home will bring in a faithful realization that all can have access to God through Christ Jesus. So far, this was done normally by ordained ministers. Lady rises up. Instead of breaking bread in the altar in the church, we break the bread of healing, bread of fellowship, bread of consolation, bread of mutual support, and bread of word. The whole world has become the altar, the universal priesthood. Of everyone is given an opportunity, a new kind of cosmic Eucharist, as dreamt by great mystic Tahar de Chardin, is enacted in our lives. Household churches. All have the priestly responsibility interceding for others to God. It will be a time for understanding that, similar to fellowships in the physical church buildings, family members praying together in their homes is also a real church, body of Christ in a spiritual sense. Greater awareness of God's presence. The call to pray from home equally assures God's presence in line with what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew 18.20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Such a divine responsibility needs to be handled with faith. If there is no faith where two or three are gathered, there will be more quarrels and fights and more diverse. A greater teacher. According to Pope Francis, the patient waiting during the pandemic taught all of us a great lesson. The pandemic shed light on the risk and consequences inherent in the world way of life, dominated by selfishness and cultural waste. And it set before us a choice. Either we continue on the road that we have followed until now, or to set out a new path. What did COVID lessons in patience a hopeful waiting? 
COVID robbed us of our Sunday communion, Eucharist, the source and summit of our spiritual life. It did bring spiritual and emotional challenges. But through this darkness, the Lord has worked to rebuild us, to have patience amidst the existential threat. We have understood the gift of one another, the gift of life, the gift of faith. We are born again into a new reality of gratitude. We have learned that life is so precious. Each one of us is so precious. We are the image of God. How does our faith tradition understand the patience? Patience is one of the great virtues of Christian tradition. The majority in this nation professes this faith. The faith, this faith teaches us simple things. Just love one another. Be patient as your heavenly father is patient. There are two Greek words translated as patience in the New Testament. Of course, I, I don't know Greek and my, my pronunciation may be poor, and, oh, yeah, but, but all the same, be patient with me. Yeah. Both have a great relevance to the modern day Christian and uh, Christian families. Hupomone means a remaining under. As when one bears up under a burden, it refers to a steadfastness in difficult circumstances. This Greek term is equivalent to the Old Testament, Eric Apim, slow to anger. Hippomone is the most common New Testament synonym pointing to bearing up under. All of us are called upon to bear under patiently our life burdens. This word teaches us a certain attitude towards both people and uh, circumstances. However unlovely and unteachable they may be, it tells us handle with care as human beings. It teaches us the attitude to events which never admits defeat and which never loses its hope and its faith, however dark the situation may be, and however incomprehensible events may be, and somehow ever so the ch ch chastening of a God may be. A patient person is slow to anger as he waits for God to provide comfort and uh, punish wrongdoing. What do we learn from the biblical idea of patience? Patience is an angelic virtue. It makes us deeply human and deeply divine, Sirenu said. It helps us navigate the life's stories, stormy seas, build fortitude, believe in the living God, make our humanity shine during the darkest nights. Our God is love, our God's infinite patience. He, clearly, the patience of God towards us is absolutely amazing. When we see God's patience in dealing with Adam and Eve as they fall into sin, and he gives them the promise of his covenant of grace. Even when the first son, Cain, kills his brother, God is infinitely patient and protects him. We see the patience of God in Noah and the ark, waiting for the flood to recede. We see God's patience being played out in the long journey of the Israelites, even with when grumbling with the wilderness, we have no food, no meat, no water. <clears throat> Moses, go to hell. We see his patience through the gospel 
as Jesus, the Son of God, is being rejected and forsaken. Those whom God calls for greater things prove their worth through patience. Abraham is called as the father of three great faiths of the world. But this simple man was tested all throughout his life. His wife could not bear a child, had to wait patiently till she was very old, at the age of 90, I think. Even that son was asked to be crucified, which Abraham, with patience, obeyed. He was asked to go to a new land, leaving the security of his place. God gave so many promises, but not when Abraham expected. But he saw the beginning of them. Then Moses, the biblical sketches an ambitious list of leadership traits ascribed to Moses, including humility, apathy, empathy, heroism, but patience, self-reflection. Moses pleaded with God for patience. When God punished Moses, he patiently accepted it. He labored for 120 years. At the end, for water, he struck the rock, rock twice. One, two, and the water came out. The Lord said, you shall not enter the promised land. Moses said, yes, Lord, I will not enter. I am all right. I have no problem, but that might be telling God, perhaps the problem might be with you with patience for punishing me for striking twice. Job, of all time, favorite hero of patience is Job. There is a powerful message in the life and testimony of Job, who is the best biblical epitome of patience. His wife and his friends told him, curse God and die. He did not curse her. Let me go to patience as the life force. Patience in the creation. Look at the universe, the sun and the moon and the stars. Look at our own birth. Let's look at ourselves. We are formed in our mother's womb. Each one of us have gone through a post process of development from an embryo to a child and fully grown human being. A woman waits patiently. We were born of the great sacrifice of patience. It is not a certain startling and dramatic appearance. Jesus parables of a sowing. Like a farmer who waits for the spring and summer rains, we must be patient until the coming of the Lord. Are you tired already? Are you with me or without me? The Eucharist as the divine patience, life implications. Vatican II says, Eucharist is the source and the summit of our spiritual life. God is really present and waiting with patience. The Church Fathers, Tertullian wrote, for where God is there to his uh, foster child, namely patience. Eucharist is the sacrament of divine patience. What is the message of the divine patience in the Eucharist? Jesus waits for us. He was destined to wait for us before the creation of the world. The Eucharistic Jesus waits for us to become like him. We gradually become more like him, more open, more generous. Jesus waits. He waits until the moment we have the same attitude he has for us. And when we do, in that moment, he reveals himself to us. Our eyes are open. Our life becomes Emma's journey 
in the world. We are not around the tabernacle now. We are on the way to Emmaus in the streets for the last two years. And it is meaningful. This journey can be achieved only through patience. Our lives become the new communion when we share patiently with others. The priest does two major acts on the altar, breaking the word and the bread. Eucharist is the summit of our spiritual grief. Sadly, 60 months have passed since we could not have access to the spiritual spring. I'm glad Hungary could gather together for communion meal. In many places, closure of the churches and suspension of masses has caused a huge mental and spiritual agony. In these dark times, we are reminded the Eucharist has a deeper meaning than not just a Sunday gathering. Jesus had his Eucharistic celebration amidst his uh, contamination to death. The first Eucharistic celebration was celebrated by a condemned prisoner, a prisoner of love. But Jesus is the priest forever. Even before this meal, he was exercising his priesthood. He was uh, bringing different kinds of bread, bread of healing, bread of feeding the hungry, bread of consoling, bread of reconciling, the bread of justice. The altar was the streets in Jerusalem. This is the Eucharist that we are looking for, the global Eucharist, a world where God's justice prevails, the global Eucharist of sharing the resources, the global Eucharist of a world without wars and fights, a global Eucharist where the world will not invest in arms when millions are starving, a global Eucharist of economic and environmental justice. Eucharist is sharing. sharing. Eucharist is a prophetic cry for the millions of elders, a cry of justice, a cry, as I was mentioning, for the third world war against poverty, against hunger, against oppression of the vulnerable. Time is uh, not a commodity. It is a communion of hearts. Jesus waits patiently in the Eucharist. Look at the world in, in our lives. The modern man lives in a feverish pitch. He is in a daring hurry. He is rushing all the time. He is restless. He wants to acquire more, consume more. He is not content. He upholds silence. He cannot wait. S speed. Speed is number one value today. Being slow is considered a vice, a waste of time. But Jesus waits. He came to us because he loves us. I'm afraid the time is not patient with me. It's just three minutes left now. Okay, I might finish the time now. Slides number 28, let's jump a bit. Ten Commandments of Patience. I had a little joke. A boy of uh, six or seven was about to receive first communion. He was taught by the teacher that when you make your first communion, you just remember some of the sins you have committed and say many, many times, many times. So the boy did not know what sins to confess. So he went through the examination of the Ten Commandments. So he said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. This is my first uh, confession. I adore strange gods many times. I took the name of God, Lord, in vain many times. I did not keep the Lord's day many times. I did not honor and my father many times. I killed many times. I committed adultery many times. I have stolen many times. I bear false witness uh, against my neighbor many times. 
I desire neighbor's wife many times. I desire neighbor's goods many times. So we might think that this boy was simple and ignorant. No, he was smart. At the end, he said, Father, these are all my sins of the past as well as for the future, he said. <laughs> I, choose to, I wish to close the wonderful introduction by summarizing that patience of Ten Commandments, it is not the Ten Commandments given by God on Mount Sinai. Let me enumerate Ten Commandments in a brief. First, be patient with yourselves. These are days of anxiety. There's always troubles coming from outside. Father Victor, the Victor Frank, Frank said the great wisdom, even the darkest moment, you can control your suffering by the way you look at the world. Eastern religions always say that our mind is monkey mind, constantly jumping from one anxiety to another, never allowing us to be patient. Be patient, be positive. When you test the patience, be positive. When you test the pandemic, be negative. To build life energy is through patience. <laughs> life is really a tough ride. We, the wisdom teaches us no pay, no gain. Three, preserve your peace in every encounter with just 10 seconds patience. All our human relationships are impacted by our reaction. Energy, angry and anxious people reactively attack others when they feel hurt. Disaster in life, depression. As uh, my psychologist says it, observe the patients for just 10 seconds, not reacting at once, no outburst. 10 seconds give bit better perspective, peace of mind. Four, learn that life is not a fast food. It is a tender plant nurtured by patience and a tree. Found everything good. Patience is the form of wisdom. Five, learn love, hope, and faith are nurtured by patience. Patience with others is love. Patience with self is hope. Patience with God is a faith. Six, being patient is a way to practice faith. God's time is not our times always. I pray and I ask God, now I come here for the Eucharist, for this uh, Eucharistic Congress. I want this grace. I want it now. We demand from God. Number seven, being patient attracts more people. The benefit of being patient is that it makes us people attracted to you. If you are a patient person, they want to deal with you more than with someone else who blows their top when they get mad. People want to walk and talk and stay with those who are patient. Eight, patient is the glue that holds the modern family together. As Pope Francis says, it is impatient that destroys modern families. Be completely humble and gentle. Patience radically nine increases your capacity for success. I will not explain to that. It's showing zero, 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 zero already. Then patience is the only way this world can give, can live in peace. History shows that impetuous, impulsive, impatient leaders are the ones that lead the world to disaster. Conclusion. Thank you for your wonderful patience through this talk. This wonderful gathering from all over the world proves our global fellowship, starting from the Paschal meal of liberation in the Old Testament. Jesus initiated the Eucharist through his last, Paschal, his last supper. Life in the Spirit is waiting patiently. God, waiting for Adams and Eves of this modern age, waiting for his chosen people, the waiting for the Messiah. Patient plays a great role in our faith journey. We understand this period of the pandemic is a period of waiting for a new world of graces. I'm deeply touched by this gathering. We have very touched time in the last three, five, six months. We journey with our people in tears and brokenness. 
in their multi-layer challenges. I'm energized by this participation, the experience of Pentecostal atmosphere. May the tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit fall down on each one of us, fortifying us in our faith, giving us grace. I strongly feel this Eucharistic Congress is the starting point of global healing. God is the eternal healer. Touch of all of us bring us to awareness. Thank you very much, Hungary, the graceful Church of Hungary, and my dear, my friends, His Eminence, Peter Karina Erdo, our friends all over the group, and all the blessings be on you. And lastly, last word, graduation that I would like to offer. Since you are patient, you have the grace of licentiate for patience. Licentiate for patience. You can give yourself a PhD or a doctorate later on. So thank you to each one of you. Nanyu Kosunam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. A nation doesn't live only in its uh, language, but in songs, music, dances, habits, uh, in traditions. In sustaining a spiritual unity, this, uh, this uh, tradition uh, plays an important role in sustaining spiritual uh, unity. In the sustention of this uh, uh, tradition, uh, the Debrecen Hoidu Dance Ensemble is very ex uh, active. They uh, open the windows to the uh, most beautiful works of folk uh, dance art. They uh, invited guest choreographers, and they try to elaborate folk dances, uh, traditional folk dances, in a new way. Uh, during this uh, activity, friendships and love were born among, um, uh, between members, and during the, the rehearsals, uh, they um, became um, uh, responsible works, uh, received their art of sustaining tradition with a, a lot of love. They are accompanied by Nasai band. Yes. 